So on this episode of Annoying the Sockless Team, we're going to be looking at how to theme ST. So let's get started. Good morning everyone and welcome back to the channel. So this is actually one of the easier things we're going to be doing. So if we switch back over to my main screen. So what I normally like to do when I try something new is I'll go download a patch that will actually do something similar or the same thing that I want it to do and then I work from there. So there are a couple of themes that are already made for ST like the Dracula theme and the Nord theme. My theme I've started with the Nord theme at the start so we'll go with that again here. So if we just save this and put it into the directory we have ST in, just so it's easy to get to. And if you've already got ST installed, you're going to want to uninstall it now. So if you go sudo make uninstall, that'll in uninstall the version of ST that you already have installed. So we're gonna have to do this if we wanna actually apply the theme. So now if we apply that patch, which is just patch-i and then the path to the patch, so ST-nord theme, and that will just patch it. So now if we open up a new terminal, this is, I forgot to actually reinstall it. So if we uh, reinstall it, sudo make clean install, that uh, terminal you saw just then was uh, urxvt. So there we go, now we have the Nord theme installed. I personally don't like this theme very much. So what we're going to do is we're going to apply the theme that I'm using for my version of ST. So. If we actually have a look at what it's done, we can actually load up that patch and see what it had already done to our config file. Open that up in Vim, just because Vim's nice. So what it does is it replaces the default color names that are in there with hex values. And it does the same thing for the normal colors and the bright colors. So the way that this works is the same as a X resources theme does. So I'll show you a tool in a couple of minutes for how to actually make a simple X resources theme so that you can actually just convert it over and it gives you a very good visual representation of the theme before you actually apply it to your terminal. So I tend to use that whenever I want to change my theme. So for the other thing that it's done, it has just modified the foreground and the background color and also flipped the cursor and the reverse cursor colors because by default they are background and foreground as opposed to foreground and background or something along those lines. You guys can see the, what the uh, numbers have changed to there. So now if we want to apply my theme, if we just go into my repos folder, so if we go CD repos, go to ST, oh, if I'm in the correct directory. So if we CD back to home, CD into repos slash ST, and we open up my config. So if we go down to my color theme, so as you can see in here, I've changed the color theme a little bit, it's not super uh, super different. So if we just copy this one, basically what I've done is just pretty much just change the brightness of the colors because I don't particularly like how blue the Nord theme is and how washed out some of the colors are. So if we go back into the ST folder and we go into my config in here. So the file you want to be modifying is the config.h file if you hadn't got that so far. The other config file, the config.def.h is the default file so if you have deleted your config file, it will just regenerate one from that. So if you delete that one as well, then you're just gonna break the program. So make sure you have one of those available. So the section you're going to wanna to modify is this color name in here. So it might <clears throat> give you a warning about it being a read-only file. If it does that, just press enter and it'll go away. So if we copy my colors in, and then we remove the color scheme that was already in here, because we don't actually need this anymore, and we close, override that, don't actually care that it's read only. So if you go W exclamation mark, if you're using Vim, that'll just override if it says it's a read only file. And then if we were to remake that, so I think sudo make uninstall, we actually need to uninstall it first and then reinstall it. So sudo make clean install, give that a couple of seconds to go through and we open it up. Now we have my theme applied. So I think that looks considerably better than the Nord theme does. You may not agree with me, but that's, it's, I don't know, it's your theme. Do whatever you want with it. You could make it bright pink if you want to. So the tool we're going to look at now is a uh, website called uh, Terminal Sexy. Hopefully YouTube doesn't get angry at me for saying that, but whatever. So what you can do in here is you can actually modify all of these colors and then you can export it as a X resources theme and basically just copy these hex values in and use those within your uh, ST theme because 
the color format is identical. It's just laid out in a slightly different way. So if you want to come to this website and just modify your theme and then apply it to your terminal, that'll be a lot easier than trying to change the color in your terminal and then reinstalling and then rerunning it again and just continually doing that. It's a lot easier if you just look at the colors visually. It'll make it take way less time to actually get the theme the way you want it to look. So there's more than just modifying the general like colors that you can do with theming. So if we bring the config back open again, so you can also change the font. So the default font is Liberation Mono. I tend to run Source Code Pro wherever I can. So you can also change the pixel size. You can anti-alias the font if you like to. It's on by default. You don't have to have it though. And then auto hint, I'm not sure what it does. So I tend to just leave that as it is. I would leave it as default, otherwise you might start running into weird problems depending on what you're doing with your terminal. So the delimiter string is that backslash n or backslash some other character. The backslash is the delimiter. Basically it'll let you escape characters. I wouldn't recommend changing that. So you can change things like the blinking timeout, the cursor thickness, there's a bell that for some reason you could have on. I wouldn't know why you would ever want that because that would be insanely annoying. And okay, you can also change the tab spaces. By default, it's set to eight. But if you like having massive tabs or you like having really small tabs, you could even disable that if you want, if you just don't want tabs to do anything. I wouldn't recommend that though, because then you're gonna, once again, like with the delimiter, you might run into weird problems where you think you have tabs or and you don't have tabs or you don't have tabs and you think you have tabs. Just make sure it's greater than zero and you'll probably be fine in that regard. So uh, these two variables here are how you change the foreground and the background color. So the foreground color is this white here. It's the default text color. And the background color is the color of the main background. You can also change the cursor color. So that is the cursor that's moving around right now. And then also the reverse cursor color, which I'm not sure about what reverse cursor is. That I'm not sure about. So one thing I didn't go over in the color theme section is you can define extra colors in here. So if you want to say uh, define number 258 and then use that as your cursor color, for example. So we could do something like this. We could say, put a color here. That is just uh, as white as you can go. And then we'll just put a comment in here so I know what it is because comments are useful. And then we can define that as 258. So now, when I uh, reinstall this, my cursor color will be set to as white as possible. So if you like, you can change the cursor. By default, it's set to something sensible, which is a block. But if you want to have a snowman, you can. For whatever reason, I guess. You can change the number of columns and rows. It's set to 80 because that is just historically how big a terminal has been. But you don't have to have it as that if you don't want to. And I think the last bit of theming is, yeah, here we go. So we have the mouse foreground and mouse background. So if you wanna change those as well, you can go right ahead. Oh, right, there was one more. Uh, this one here, the color used to display font attributes when font config selected a font which doesn't match the ones requested. Don't know what it does, but you can change that as well. So I think that is pretty much everything, yeah. So the rest of the file is all about different hotkeys and different keys that are accepted by ST. So before I end off the video, I just want to show you guys that the color of my cursor actually has changed. So we have to uninstall ST again, and we have to reinstall ST. And then if we actually reinstall it, not run uninstall twice in a row, we bring this up. As we can see, the cursor actually you probably can't see because I chose white. That was a bad choice. I probably should have chose a different color. Since it didn't crash and actually is showing a correct color, we can see that actually has changed the color. So I hope this video didn't end up being too rambly. I had to kind of relearn a lot of this theming stuff as I was going because I just tend to set my theme once and then just forget about it. And I think that's what most people do. So once you've gone and set your theme, then you're probably never gonna wanna touch it again until you, I don't know, maybe update to a new version of ST. So if you like this video, remember to smash that like button, and leave me a comment down below, let me know what you wanna see next time. If you got any ideas for things you want me to cover in ST, then let me know and I'll get to them at some point. I don't know when the last time I did one of these ST videos was. I was planning to do more of them and then I kind of got distracted by other things. So 
I'll get another episode out at some point. So if you want to see more videos like this when I do ST videos or just random other videos that I do, remember to subscribe and ding the little bell icon down below and you'll probably get updates, but we can never actually trust YouTube to push updates to anyone. So since that's the case, go follow my Twitter and my Mastodon and you'll probably get updates there unless they decide they don't want to push updates anymore either. So I think that's pretty much everything for me and I'm out. <laughs>